let's do question 49 so here we solve for r so first uh, i'm going to divide both sides by p so i get uh, a over p and this equals uh, e raised to the power of rt now i take uh, natural logarithm on both sides so i will get uh, natural logarithm of a over p and this equals uh, natural logarithm of e raised to the power of rt now using the power property of natural logarithm we can put this rt in front so therefore this becomes we have a natural logarithm of a over p on the left side and uh, this equals uh, rt times of natural logarithm of e uh, we recall the value of natural logarithm of e and this equals 1 so we can replace this equals 1 and this means rt times 1 equals rt so on the right side we will have only rt and on the left side we have natural logarithm of a over p so now to solve for r we have to divide both sides by t so let's do that so these two t's case cancel and we have r over here and this divided by t we can rewrite this as 1 over t times of uh, natural logarithm of a over p so therefore we see that uh, r equals 1 over t times of natural logarithm of a over p so we solved for r let's do question 50 so here we solve for t so first uh, i'm going to divide both sides by p so i get uh, a over p and this equals uh, 1 plus r over n raised to the power of nt and uh, we can apply natural logarithm to both sides that is uh, natural logarithm of a over p and uh, this equals uh, natural logarithm of this expression that is uh, 1 plus r by n raised to the power of nt so we will apply the properties that is a power rule of uh, natural logarithm so therefore this nt comes in front and uh, we can rewrite this as natural logarithm of a over p this we have on the left side and this equals uh, nt times of natural logarithm of 1 plus r over n since we want to solve for t we have to divide both sides by the remaining terms in the right side that is the uh, the product of this as well as uh, this natural logarithm so let's do that and uh, i'm also going to rearrange uh, t such that uh, it is uh, on the left side so therefore t equals we will have this uh, natural logarithm of a over p and this has to be divided by this product terms that is uh, n times of natural logarithm of 1 plus r over n so we have solved 40 this is the expression 40 let's solve for i here so first uh, i divide both sides by 10 so i get uh, d by 10 equals log of uh, i over i naught and now we raise uh, both sides by the uh, power of 10 so therefore this becomes a 10 to the power of uh, d over 10 this equals uh, i over i naught and this is other way of writing the logarithmic form into exponent form this is a log form and this is a exponent form using the power of 10 so now we can solve for i by multiplying both sides by i naught and uh, rearranging i on the left side so therefore i equals uh, i naught times of uh, 10 power d over 10 so this is the expression for i let's solve for uh, a in this equation uh, so first uh, i'm going to apply the properties of uh, natural logarithm that is uh, over here i can rewrite this as uh, 
I'm sorry, uh, this is actually natural logarithm of a minus natural logarithm of a naught. So this is natural logarithm of a minus of natural logarithm of a naught. This is the actual question. So we can uh, rewrite this using the properties of natural logarithm. That is uh, natural logarithm of a minus natural logarithm of b equals uh, natural logarithm of a over b. We use this uh, difference property and uh, rewrite this. So therefore, this becomes natural logarithm of a over a naught. Now I multiply both sides by t. So therefore, if we multiply, it will become t times of k is, I'm sorry, we have to multiply both sides by k. So when we do that, we get uh, kt and this equals uh, negative of natural logarithm of a over a naught. Now I divide both sides by negative 1. So therefore, kt divided by negative 1 is uh, negative kt. And uh, this negative divided by negative 1 will become positive. So we will have only natural logarithm of a over a naught. So this is the log form. And uh, we can write the corresponding exponential form. That is, we raise both sides to e. So therefore, this becomes e raised to the power of natural uh, kt. And this equals, uh, we raise uh, this expression to the e, natural logarithm of a over a naught. We know that uh, natural logarithm and uh, e both are inverse to each other. So they cancel out and we are left with uh, a over a naught. So we can write down this as a over a naught here. And uh, we have uh, e raised to the power of negative kt on the left side. And to solve for a, we have to multiply both sides by a naught. And uh, I write uh, a such that it comes to the left side. So therefore, a equals a naught times of e raised to the power of negative kt. So this is the expression for a. Let's solve for i in this question. So to solve for i, we need to uh, add this term to both sides as plus well we have to subtract this term to both sides. So when we do that, uh, I will be adding this uh, 2.5 times of log of i over i naught and uh, this equals 6. Uh, when we subtract m, we will have uh, 6 minus of m. We now divide uh, both sides by this quantity that is 2.5. So therefore on the left side we will have log of i over i naught. This equals uh, 6 minus m over 2.5. Now we have to uh, take anti-log, that is uh, this is the log form and uh, we can rewrite this in exponent form. Since this uh, corresponds to log to the base 10, we raise uh, both sides to the power of 10. So therefore, uh, if we do that, we will get 10 power log of i over i naught and this equals uh, 10 raised to the power of 6 minus m over 2.5. Since uh, this log and this log to the base 10, they both are inverse to each other. They cancel out and uh, we are left with the uh, i over i naught. And this equals uh, 10 raised to the power of 6 minus m over 2.5. Now to determine i, we have to multiply both sides by i naught. So therefore, we get the expression for i equals i naught times of 10 raised to the power of 6 minus m. This is over 2.5. And so this is the expression for i naught. I'm sorry, uh, for i. In fact, we can put a bracket. 